Hey, Business Spirits fans, this is the oft-talked-about, seldom-heard Missing Christmas episode from 2021 that we recorded and never released. As I said, it, it is over a year old. We recorded it in December of 2021, both before and after Christmas, because it took us a while to get the whole thing in the can, as it were. So, apologies now for the dated jokes. Also, it's been a tremendously long time since I've edited a podcast, it appears, and I am way out of practice. So, hopefully this will go well for you. We have not given up on the podcast. We're always looking for and hoping that we'll be able to come back to it someday. Yeah, I still have lots of, of cutting room floor things left lying around in case I decide to make another cutting room floor episode. But this is the last fully recorded episode. I hope that we can reformat this in a way that will make everything more convenient for us to produce in the near future. Um, until then, you know, enjoy this. I think the McDonald's should go to Ireland and they should take me with them. I mean, I'll pay my way or whatever, but I just don't want to go by myself. I mean, Nick and I both are royalty in Scotland, apparently. Card-carrying lord and lady here. Oh, I've got I've got an Irish lordship. Oh, here, so okay. I, we can cover most of Europe with my titles. <laughs> Hot damn. Like most people in Europe are going to be like, shut the fuck up, American. <laughs> I bought two square f- inches to year one, so suck it. Oh, Shazbat. That's what we'll do for Christmas next year is we'll go. I know that there's a haunted manor in England that a headless horseman... Shows up at Christmas, right? Yeah, shows up at Christmas, leading a funeral carriage that shows up at Christmas. Hot damn, my passport doesn't expire until three months after that, so let's go. Okay. <laughs> and that gives me a year to get my passport, so... <laughs> it's going to take that long, apparently. Yeah, Just apparently about. at that point yeah. t- this point in time, that's how long it's taken. And by then, most of the UK and the US will be mostly dead by then, so, you know, we'll be able to write our ticket on wherever we want to go. Lines will so. be shorter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they won't be mostly dead. It'll be the unpleasants that'll be dead. Nah. <laughs> you hope, but it's like... It, it's like Drunk driving car wreck. It's always the innocent that goes yeah. down. It's it always the drunk that dies. It always takes out the sweet single mom that works three jobs. You know? Yeah. The teenager on her way home from a volleyball game. It's never the drunk that dies. Sorry, it's like a drink with death. I was burping right when you did that. <laughs> I think I'm recording. <laughs> Are you? I feel like I pushed that button. Yeah. yeah, let's make sure you're recording before we start the show. <laughs> it's quitter's attitude. <laughs> That's the opposite of what it is. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Ho, ho, ho. She always calls me that. I know, right? Ha, ha. This is our Roasted. Christmas spectacular. Spectacular. <laughs> I'm too Scottish. I can't roll my R's. Yeah, same here. I like the face that goes with it, though. I wish she could. <laughs> I can't even see it because I have another screen up. That's why we brought Mel on the show, just so we could have someone to roll the R's for us, because we're getting tired of not being able to do it. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm not sure that I do it right. Like, I feel like a lot of people roll their R's at the back of their throat like no that's the brogue that's that's the way that the scots do it a a proper rolled r is up in the front of the mouth that's the latin that's the latin rolled r that's the one katie and i cannot do i do do it all day yeah i I can do that i can do the wookie call that's a (laughs) i can do that that's when we went on family vacation did sean and rowan have any wookie conversations not that I remember. They both speak Wookiee, apparently. So. Uh, Rowan's really into Ghostbusters and Gremlins right now. She's gone full 80s girl. Love it. 
Well, this is just more proof she's my mini me, I guess. <laughs> she is obsessed with Ghostbusters now and pretty damn fond of Gremlins. I mean, I, rem- I vividly remember being a child and watching Ghostbusters on VHS every day until our- <laughs> while eating a cheese sandwich until our VCR died and ate the video. <laughs> That was my daily routine at lunchtime, I believe, before right. I started school. She went to see Ghostbusters Afterlife with a friend, and was that kind of super excited where she like just wants to talk about it and not stop, but she also, at the same time, didn't want to spoil it for me, so she's having a hard time communicating things she wanted to talk about without spoiling it for me, so she was just kind of caught in this weird little trap where she couldn't say the things she wanted to say. Sounds but then, But then we watched the original, and she loved that, and now she's like been playing the video game. Nick and I played Ghostbusters a lot growing up. She's asked for Ghostbuster proton packs and blasters and traps for Christmas. Well, it's the only thing I've heard any of your kids want for Christmas. I sent Gengi a list a while Gengi back. Gengi didn't share it. Well, she's a bitch. I mean, I'm not going to get them anything for Christmas until after Christmas at this rate. But, <laughs> okay. You know. no, they, they may be onto some whole new shit by then. Yeah. You might as well wait. <laughs> I did, however, find something I thought would be good for Ramsey. Yeah. Fart ninjas. Fart ninjas? Fart ninjas? Fart ninjas. All right. <laughs> that doesn't say Ramsey. I don't know what does, so. I don't, I don't know what the hell that might be, but it does say Ramsey. There are these little ninjas that have, like, motion sensors in them and fart when you walk through uh, them. I was having a nostalgia moment about Battle Beasts the other day, which you guys probably don't remember. They're, like, these little figurines that had, like, a, a heat transfer sticker on their chest, and you had to rub it to see which element they were a warrior for. It was either water, fire, or wood. And, you know, like, fire would beat wood, and wood would beat water, and water would beat fire. Like, no one else remembers this. <laughs> I mean, bat- the words battle beasts sound vague- sounds vaguely familiar, but other than that, I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> Didn't I get you a My Pet Monster a few years ago? I mean, it was like 10 years ago. Oh. You did? What the fuck ever happened to that? Did your children take it? Because that sounds like something kids do. I'm not sure what's happened to that. Yeah, you did get me. Was it a full-size one or like a smaller one? Yeah, no, it was a full one. What the fuck ever happened to that? I don't know. Everything stops until he's located. Well, it, I mean, <laughs> it should be up on that shelf up there. <laughs> if I had him, that's where I would put him. cage and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. What the fuck happened to that? I'm angry now. Children. Or Cal got mad at you and burnt it Maybe. in the backyard. I need to find the my, a cat placenta. I need to find the My Pet Monster movie, preferably on VHS. Do you remember the My Pet Monster movie? It was like a kid who changed into the My Pet Monster. Like, it made no sense. Sounds vaguely familiar. If it's not Rainbow Bright, I don't remember it. <laughs> or the Goonies. Fuck yeah, the Goonies. Goddamn Goonies. I think that's streaming on uh, Peacock right now. I own Peacock? it in multiple formats. <laughs> so do I, but... Every format that's been known to man. <laughs> I cry a lot more of it at it as an adult. I used to obsessively try to make the kids watch it, which meant that they never wanted to watch it because dad recommended it. So I've kind of laid off. But then, like, I don't know, about a few months ago, like, Ramsey was saying, hey, we should watch the Goonies. I'm like, fuck yeah, you should. <laughs> God damn Let's it. Let's go watch some fucking Goonies. That's why I like taking the kids to the movie theaters to see stuff, because if they're at home and I'm trying to make them watch something, they could wander off and go do their own thing. But if we're at the movie theater, they got nowhere to go. They have to sit and watch it. So I mean, there is an arcade at most movie theaters. Yeah, but they have to have money for that. Yeah, and they do not, because they would don't think that far ahead and would rather wander across the street and blow it all at the gas station on snacks. When I lived in New York, I hoarded quarters so that I could go to the movie theater and play the Jurassic Park shooting game. (laughs) I needed quarters for laundry and Jurassic Park. Sometimes Jurassic Park won. (laughs) That sure it'll be okay a few more days. Yeah. All right. Um, Christmas. Christmas time is here. In the city. Happiness. And cheer. Beer. And beer. And queers. Gay no? Christmas isn't as good as gay Halloween. Just remember that. That's a good point. Yeah. So what did we do here, guys? Because at one, <laughs> one point there was a discussion that... Here's the thing. Last year I told Kel we were going to do a Christmas episode. And she said, oh, are you guys going to do like a Ghost of Christmas Past, Christmas Present, Christmas Future thing? And last year we did not. We decided to do like Victorian Christmas terror tor- Which stories. Which I don't think or, we were successful with. We weren't even remember, remotely successful at. I did stories about Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. <laughs> And I did, like, what? I did, like, the 
Phantom Trapper of Labrador, and I did um, oh, what was that joint? Uh, that haunted hotel in the North Pole or close to the North Pole that I found. Yeah, you did Alaska or something. Yeah, not like the literal North Pole, like North Pole, Alaska. Like <laughs> just this random ass hotel. No one works there, but it's there. There's one guy who still works there. I think. I think there's one caretaker. <laughs> But I thought, hey, that'd be a pretty neat idea if we, like, did a ghost of the past, a ghost of the present, and a ghost of the future. And that's what I was trying to advocate, and apparently I was the only one who caught the memo. <laughs> I caught the memo. Yeah. But I did not make it Christmassy. Well, it didn't and- have to be Christmassy. I mean, I there was no way I was going to get a ghost that was from the future and Christmassy, but I found a ghost from the future. That was... I knew that was going to be the tough one. I did a... Ghost from the past that's Christmassy. Okay. And what did you come up with, Mel? Are you... It's it's kind of what I had in mind, which it was a ghost that was haunting the past, is still haunting presently, and then... Okay, we'll call yours ma- present then. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> there, look, we're I mean, on theme. I, we're on theme. I, I have a really lame future... Uh, God, words are so stupid. Oh, fight the future. (laughs) Fight the future. (laughs) Aren't we doing that right now as a society? (laughs) Kind of. Apparently, if you break up with somebody that doesn't believe in science, it's called Darwinning. But a bunch. Yeah, I don't, that's, I don't know that I can get I on board with that. I don't make this stuff up. I didn't think you did, but I don't know that I can be on board with it. So I guess we're sort of got a, a past, present, future then, yeah? Sort of. Yeah. My ghost has an occurrence on a Christmas. My ghost actually happens in the past, but there's a ghost from their future, which is our past, and their past, oh. and our past, and our past, their present, there was a ghost in the future. So it's a ghost or a time slip? No, it was a ghost. It wasn't a time slip. The time slip! It was a... Is this the Mandela effect? No. What color is Zero's nose? When the fuck did it turn into a jack-o'-lantern? I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Knows. I I zoned out. I don't know what we're talking about. Supposedly, Zero from Nightmare for Before Christmas has always had a jack-o'-lantern for her nose. Uh... In this universe. In, the, in our current reality? I feel like that movie was made so long ago that even if they did, there's no way that the cameras that took its picture for all the stop motion would have been able to pick that up. You know, that's a good... Well, that's a good point. I mean, but wouldn't the, it, wouldn't the camera it, would have been 35 millimeter. Wouldn't his nose at least appear orange then, <laughs> instead of red? Well, it's a reddish orange... I mean, it's always been kind of a reddish orange, like not totally red, like Rudolph's was totally red and his was more. I remember his being Rudolph red. I thought that was part of the. See, here's the 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 thing about indoctrination. About that um, resolution, the camera would have caught it. So it would have appeared like that in the movie theater. But on home video, it would have been lower resolution. Well, so, I remember seeing it in the theater, but I don't remember seeing that. See, in I don't theater. think I saw it in the theater. I think I only saw it on video. So that would explain why I thought it was red. I don't know. The Berenstain Bears. It's, 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 it's right. Thing. Apparently, there's something about like Scooby Doo doesn't actually say Rut Row, it's a different dog. Oh, I thought and it was just that he said "ruh-o" or uh, "ro" or something like that. Like Hang he has on. to have like, said it like "ruh-o raggy." There's a there's yeah. a lot of a lot of them. I mean, they're they're still making new Scooby Doo's. They've been making Scooby Doo's for fifty years. Like he's. <laughs> I mean, I was meaning there was a lot of Mandela effects, not a lot of yeah. Well, yeah, Scooby Doo's necessarily. It's a lot of those too, but all right, moving along, kids. Sorry, I got us off track. That's all right. As per usual, it doesn't take much. I hear heavy breathing outside the door. I locked Theo out of the room because <laughs> he wouldn't pick between in and out. Yeah. Are we making the past go first? I mean, that's chronologically the way we should do it, yeah? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Woot! It's a good thing I waited till the last minute to look for this because this article was posted on December 8th. This oh, year. <laughs> this, is, this is hot news. You got hot news coming in. Wait a second. I thought I was the present. Well, me just finding the story was very present. I just had a thought 
Mm -hmm. And I really hope the answer to this is no. Have you guys already covered Alcatraz at all in previous shows? I mean, we talked about it briefly. We haven't gone into depth. Okay. I I had a moment of panic just now thinking, well, shit, this is probably old news. Well, there was our Alcatraz special. I forgot about that one. Cat placentas and Alcatraz. (laughs) Um, I mean, I feel like Nick and I typically have been going for the more obscure topics, which may not be a winning strategy, but it's where we're at. I like it. Katie advocates a lot for us doing, like, you know, the same shit every other show does, which would probably get us a whole lot more listeners if we did. But I'm always saying, no, somebody's already doing that one. We got nothing new to add. Well, Let's I do mean, something nobody talks about. I, I get the, the validity of, of both sides of the argument. No, we're doing a holiday special. We're not special enough to take the holidays off. Mer. All right. I'm talking about the Christmas Scarecrow. The Christmas Scarecrow? The Christmas Scarecrow. Uh, the hell you say? <laughs> I'm not sure how to wrap my head around that yet. Don't, I can't make this shit up. We're moving to, uh, we were talking the 1400s here. So the story goes, a man named Hans Trapp lived... No, he didn't. <clears throat> ...during the 1400s in the French regions of, uh, I don't speak French, Alsace and Lorraine. He was rich and powerful, and many of the villagers feared him. His thirst for power knew no end. He would do just about anything to gain riches and power. And then he began dabbling in black arts to find more riches and power. But this still wasn't enough, so he started summoning demons, and then eventually he made a deal with the devil. The surrounding community couldn't handle it, so they went to the Pope for help. They literally went to the Pope? Well, they, like, for sent hope. their clergy to the Pope. It wasn't just, like, you know, they took hope. their, like, picket, you know, their, their, they did not not their picket. Hope on Pope. The word. They didn't just, like, angry mob it to the Vatican. They sent clergy members. So the Pope excommunicates the man and takes his lands and banishes him. So Trapp was penniless and abandoned, so he started wandering the countryside. He eventually made a makeshift home in Bavaria, where he started to go insane. Bavaria is a good place for that, isn't it? Um, why did Satan just up and abandon the dude? Like, well, because the Pope said to. <laughs> I guess. I think the Does devil's... Satan listen to the Pope? I think Satan's scared of the Pope. So Satan and God are on equal terms, but the Pope is greater than Satan. I'm not it's, Catholic. I don't I don't know that Satan's I don't know that Satan's on even terms with God He's in not, uh, because you know what Christian the, mythology. Priests can banish demons. So I think the Pope can like be like Satan demons, but But that's those are priests. So I feel like the Pope could be like Satan yeah, yeah, cut it out. Okay. I see. Okay. I feel like he can the, veto it. The Pope is infallible. So I think I think the devil's on par with angels, but I don't know that he's God level. Yeah. Well, cuz he was an angel. Yeah. Like, like Archangel level, not like, you know. Like he was the most choir. powerful, arguably the most powerful angel. I don't know. At least he was the one that pissed God off the most. I was going to say, I think I think most of that power just came from the fact that he was willing to, like, say, uh, no, this is bullshit. And yet he overpowers so much in our lives. Uh, I mean, just nestling, which is nestling. a big part of our lives. But. <laughs> All right. Going insane in Bavaria. He began fantasizing Kate McDonald's memoir <laughs> about eating human flesh and starts trying to figure out how he's going to do this. Uh oh. So then he has a plan. His plan. <laughs> Does he go to a morgue? Nope. Puts an ad in the newspaper. It's Germany. I mean, it's the 1400s. When did the printing press roll about? I think like 1386. That was very specific. <laughs> 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 I feel like we should fact check that. Now I gotta consult the oracle. It's 5149 that it's bullshit. Printing press invention. 1436. Around 1436. I knew there's a three and a six in there. And a six and a six. I was only off by 50 years. It, it is impressively close. So maybe, maybe he <laughs> didn't realize he could put an ad in the newspaper. This is his plan. He, uh... Dresses up as a scarecrow. And by dressing up as a scarecrow, I mean he just shoves sticks and straws in his pants and shirt so he kind of looks like one. (laughs) 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 And then then he goes out to a very seldom used road and just stands there until a small shepherd boy comes by. 
This is Jeeper Creepers. I saw this. And then uh, he uh, waits for this little boy, and then he takes, I'm assuming, one of the sticks out of his shirt that is sharpened (laughs) and stabs him. And then Uh, he takes the shepherd boy back to the mountains of Bavaria to his little hut and uh, cuts him up and roasts him. Right when he's about to take the first bite, he's struck by a bolt of lightning. And he falls and hits his head and dies. Wow. So this becomes a story of parents warning their children to behave so evil Hans Trop, the scarecrow, doesn't come for them. Uh, he's typically paired with Santa Claus. So this is, we're talking, it's a Krampus situation without being Krampus, like in that same vein of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do have a theory that the Krampus was just a story that villagers came up with when, like, they knew their kid was a shit and they just wanted to not have to deal with him anymore. They just wanted to put him in a bag and beat him with sticks? Oh, well, yeah, you just leave him in the woods and let the wolves take care of it back then. So, like, I think, like, the villagers all just kind of, like, got together and, like, that kid, we didn't kill him. That was the Krampus, right, guys? Oh, yeah, that was a Krampus. (laughs) got that little shit. Did you see the story a few weeks ago about a woman who killed, like, her five-year-old? Like, it was the fourth of five kids or something like that. But she was convinced that he was going to be the next Hitler, so she killed him. Yes. And there was also a lady on Thanksgiving that went hunting, shot a deer, and then shot her four- or five-year-old Well, right after she shot the deer to protect him. Shot the four- or five-year-old? Yeah. She, like, killed her son. She, She went hunting on Thanksgiving morning. Her. And this wasn't a purposeful shooting. Oh, like, no, she shot-, shot him on purpose. She- oh, so yeah, I thought that wow. one was like an accident. I oh, didn't no. know. She got back to the house without her son and her brother restrained her while the family like rushed this poor child to the ER where he did not make it and called the cops. Jesus. Wow. Troubling times we live in, folks. Troubling times. Well, a lot of people's nerves are laid bare right now, unfortunately, and some people are better at handling it than others. That lady that thought her child might be Hitler, or I think she also said he might be like a baby Ted Bundy and things. Yeah. She had conversations with like a friend from high school about it, and the friend from high school just thought it was like a mom venting. Oh. And then the kid ended up dead, and she's like, ah, fuck, I better send this to the FBI or whoever. (laughs) What if she was right, though? Like... Okay, what <laughs> what made her think that he was a miniature genocidal maniac? I don't know. I'm Apparently, not she sure, she, but uh, she thought he I was mean, a psychopath. Yeah, like I I, like I only kind of skimmed it, but like she was like giving it time, like hoping it would be a phase that he'd grow out of. And like apparently, from her point of view, it just kept escalating. So like, not there to fact check, but I yeah. saw I don't even know what saw something. I think it was on Instagram. I don't know where it even came from, but it was like. What if you were the one that killed Hitler, but once you killed him, reality shifted because, you know, it changes the future. You killed Hitler as a baby, and then you didn't know why. You just remembered killing this baby. <laughs> why? Oh, God. Why? why is this showing up in my feed? <laughs> it hurts my head. Or you kill Hitler, reality shifts, and the world is actually much worse. Yeah. Because, you know. He didn't, wasn't there to set an example? I don't know. Because well, well, multiple the other countries nations. didn't join an alliance yeah. against them. And- okay, I have, there's more to my story. Okay, excellent. All right. Don't let me distract you. So, <laughs> the Christmas scarecrow was believed to be based on a real person. I there mean, was, that sounds a thousand percent true. There's- there was a knight named Hans von Trotha, born around 19, or 1950, 1450, <laughs> that was entrusted. Oh, a knight, a not knight. a knight. Yeah, a knight. A knight. Okay. Uh, who was born in 1450, and he was entrusted Can with it. two <laughs> castles within the Palatine territory, which covered parts of France and Germany. He ended up having a disagreement with a local abbot over the property and possessions because one of the castles he had been given used to belong to the monastery, and the monastery wanted it back, and he wouldn't do it. So there was a feud started. The height of the feud, Von Trotha built a dam that stopped the water supply to the village. <laughs> so the abbot got mad, had the dam removed, flooded the village. <laughs> that didn't work out so well. So then he went to the Vatican. He, he, was, he was an abbot. He wasn't an engineer. Come on. <laughs> so uh, the hey, abbot, was, abbot was flooded the village and then was like, well, fuck. He must be working with <laughs> Satan. Goes to the Pope. 
the devil tricked me into flooding the village. And that was the devil's work. The Pope. That wasn't me not knowing math. The Pope summoned Von Trotha to question him and his loyalty to the church and God. Von Trotha refused to attend his meeting, going so far as to accuse the Pope of immorality. So Von Trotha was not sticking it to little boys, apparently. The Pope excommunicated Von Trotha, but Von Trotha just moved to live in his other castle and died a few la- years later. <laughs> Doesn't, this is lame. I'm going to go live in my other castle. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> it's it's unknown if he really made a deal with the devil, but he was not liked by that townspeople, and they blamed him for the, <laughs> Cut off their the, water the supply. flooding. He's it Mr. doesn't Burns. appear they blamed him for cutting off the water supply. It appears they blamed him for the flood. He also uh, overtaxed roadways. And they considered him a black knight and do believe his spirit would restlessly roam the forest hills. Mm. So that's my that's my Christmas story for you all. Eating little boys. Roast them on a spit. Literally. I mean, he had all the sticks. Yeah. Which might be why he was struck by lightning, because he didn't get all the sticks out of He's his costume. Really tall ones yeah, exactly. Had one sticking up there. Children oh. roasting on an open spit. <laughs> lightning zapping at your brain. <laughs> Forgot about that part already. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Do you? All right. Know the way to Santa Fe? Uh, no, but I can Google it. Excellent. All right. I guess I'm next, because yeah. I'm whatever. Present. You're present. 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 <laughs> As I've already told you, I'm doing Alcatraz, which... The word Alcatraz means pelican in Old Spanish. I did not know that. Not that it has any meaning here whatsoever. Is Old so, Spanish like Old English? I guess. But not. Pelicans live on rocks in the ocean and they trap things. Oh. There's, there's a, can, you know. Do, do they also murder? Murder! I've seen a murder. Pretty shitty birds. I mean, the birds are, sh- are often shitty in general, but. Yeah. They're real stinky birds. So, Alcatraz was built to break the spirits of even the most rebellious criminals. The Miwok Indians have always considered Alcatraz inhabited by evil spirits. It's believed that the Miwok Indians may have used the isolated island for thousands of years as a place to gather birds' eggs for food and to banish members of their society. By 1859, the U.S. government seized control of the island and used it to imprison 19 Hopi Indians hoping to give, hope, who refused to give in to the aggressive government tactics to Americanize. Beginning in 1907, prisoners were put to work on what was then the largest reinforced concrete structure in the world. It was completed in 1912, and the workers who built it became the first inmates. Uh, <laughs> by 1934, the Federal Bureau of Prisons you opened a You were found guilty of illegally building a prison. Get in the cell. The end. <laughs> and those sad white dudes have been haunting it ever since. No. The Federal Bureau of Prisons opened a maximum security, minimum privilege prison to deal with the worst criminals of all time. Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary, a prison designed to crush the souls of men, both prisoners and guards suffered deep physical and psychological trauma while there. Suicides and murders were a regular occurrence. Inmates who broke one of the prison's many rules would be punished by being sent to what was known as the strip cell. Before entering the strip wow, cells, wow, 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 prisoners wow, were stripped wow, wow. naked. Bow chicka wow wow. The cell had no mattress, no sink, and no lights. The only toilet, a hole in the ground. The dark steel room, room removed what was left of hope and humanity in the criminals who earned a stay there. That's like a mid-range hotel in India. That's... <laughs> One of the worst incidents was an attempted escape in May of 1946 that turned into a bloody standoff and left three men dead. The Block C unit where the inmates died is believed by some to be haunted. Strange clanging noises break out at night from an empty corridor, but stops as soon as the watchman opens the door. Clang, 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 went the watchman. Wookie. Wookie. Yes. <laughs> 
bang, bang, bang on the rebel. Okay. One of the most famous tales associated with the island supposedly occurred in the 1940s when Warden James Johnston held a Christmas party at his residence for the staff at the prison. The good cheer is said to have been brought to a swift halt when an apparition sporting mutton chop whiskers and a gray suit appeared. The temperature in the room plummeted and the fire blew out before returning to normal when the spirit disappeared. Reportedly, even Warden Johnston, who did not believe believe in ghosts, heard the unmistakable sounds of a woman sobbing while leading several guests on a tour of the prison. Just as the sobbing stopped, an icy cold wind blew through the group. I did the Christmas party one last year. You What? You did the Christmas party one last year? Yeah, that one was part oh, of last year's Christmas. Oh, son of a Christmas. bitch. God. Yeah, well, let's just forget the whole Christmas part then. <laughs> Alcatraz is where Al Capone spent his final years. In the later years of the prison uh, guards often reported hearing strange noises coming from the utility corridor where three inmates were shot during a failed escape. Capone himself is thought to be making his presence known when he was there. He spent most of his downtime playing a banjo in the prison shower room in recent years. That's where I always play my banjo. It's in the shower room. By the time Capone made it to Alcatraz, like his brain had already rotted away so much from syphilis that he was like barely aware of his own existence Yay, too, syphilis. from what I hear. Well, maybe his syphilis-addled ghost is still stringing those banjo beats. That is um, the best possible combination for ghost is you're welcome. syphilis-addled Al Capone <laughs> with a banjo. <laughs> that checks all my bingo boxes. That's Does it? Yep. So... Other extraordinary experiences include hearing sobbing and moans, terrible smells, and, quote, the thing, an entity that was said to appear with glowing eyes. Other reports were made of, a, of phantom prisoners and soldiers were appearing before guards and families who lived on the island. In 1984, Ranger and Night Watchman Rex Norman was awakened by the sound of a weighty steel door swinging wildly in cell block C. The sound stopped when he got there, but it began the next night and the next. So they brought in a psychic. Her name is Sylvia Brown, and she was accompanied by a CBS News team. Brown identified the troublemaker as Butcher Malkowitz, a man who had been killed by another prisoner in the laundry room. During the seance, Brown tried to convince the Butcher's ghost to leave the prison, but the ghost refused. So the future part that I was going to try to slip in was that uh, Alcatraz was closed for over a year due to COVID, and during that time, they were doing a bunch of renovations of the warden's domicile. I don't know; they call it something else, but like closed for tours, like they don't have. Well, it was it was it. completely closed for tours, yeah. um, and there's all sorts of ghost tours and stuff of mm -hmm. Alcatraz that happened, but all of that was shut down during the pandemic, and they're completely gutting the the warden's house and trying to like save most of the structure but they're also having to take out parts of the structure so it leads to the idea of what hauntings might change because the structure has changed if it's tied to the place what if they take enough of the place away that some of those hauntings stop what if al capone's <laughs> poor syphilis addled ghost is Bring back Al Capone's syphilis banjo brick. Yes. We can't afford to lose that. Yes. Of course, a lot of times with like um, haunted or cursed objects, destroying the object just releases whatever it is. Like a lot of people like, oh, it's a haunted doll. We need to burn it. But all that does is just release whatever's trapped in that doll. So it has free reign to do whatever the fuck it wants. See, that sounds bad. I was listening to a podcast that had Burt Kreischer on it earlier this week. And he was talking about when he went to Alcatraz. Because he worked on several shows for, like, the Travel Channel and FX. And before he went, he, uh, I guess, called up Zach Baggins and asked mm -hmm. him, asked him, hey, what I want to, I want to see some shit at Alcatraz. What do I got to do? So Zach Baggins said, here's what you do. You get yourself alone from the rest of the group, sneak off so they don't see you, and lock yourself in a cell, and then just say, all right, I'm here. Show yourself. Uh, open yourself up to the ghost. So that's what he did. So he, like, snuck away from the group, and he found a cell, and he, like, closed the door, said, all right, I'm here. Show me what you got. And he saw, like, a red beam appear and shoot across the room. And he just instantly got up. He said, that's it. Fuck it. I'm out of here. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Uh, should we run into my story before Mel turns into a pumpkin? Why do I have so many windows open? Okay, we're good. We're good. We just have bonus windows open. Bonus windows. Are we bonus recording? <laughs> um, I might because I, I kind of took a lot of notes for mine that probably aren't necessary. <laughs> Well, because I got Future Ghost, which, you know, is is the rough one. So I went looking for warnings by ghosts, like ghosts from the future telling of imminent demise, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, I've heard lots of stories about that, or at least I thought I had. I couldn't find very many. I found lots of, like, moment of death stories. Like, oh, my brother was pierced by a spear, and I saw him pierced by a spear at that moment in front of me. Or, or there was a story from a gal who the whole family heard a friend of her father's calling from outside the front door, and they went to the front door. There was no one there. There was no tracks in the snow. But, of course, he would uh, died being hit by a bus that night. And then there's the Wyoming oh, death shit. ship. Yeah, yeah. There, I found one about someone's aggressive Italian grandmother slapping them awake in the middle of the night when she died. <laughs> That's how I would like to haunt the world. Just slapping mm-hmm. people. From being Wake the up, grave. bitch. This one, I found a little longer one that I thought was a little interesting. It was uh, from an Indian woman who was talking about visiting her grandmother as a child. There was a friend in her grandmother's neighborhood that she would visit when they went to go see her grandmother. So she'd cut through a few backyards to go visit the friend, including her grandma's neighbor, Mrs. Jenkins. And then on the other side of that was like a cremation yard. So this time she was cutting through Mrs. Jenkins' yard and Mrs. Jenkins was sitting on the back porch and she looked like hell, like she'd been awake all night. And uh, Mrs. Jenkins asked the girl, said, hey, where are you headed? And she goes, oh, I'm going to cut through the cremation yard. And Mrs. Jenkins pointed over and said, nah, nah, they're cremating someone right now. You need to go wait a couple hours until they're done. So she said, all right. So she just went back to grandma's house and her mother asked her why she came back so quickly and she said, oh, well, Miss Jenkins told me that they're cremating someone in the cremation yard. <laughs> and and the, the mom, like, became weak and said, that was impossible because Mrs. Jenkins died last night and they were cremating her right then and there. <laughs> in fact, she was just about to go leave to join the You crowd. know, when you say cremation yard, I'm just picturing, like, a log yard of dead bodies. Well, I think that's a little bit how they handle a lot of that in India. I'm not entirely sure. I know it's not. Do you like... really think an Indian woman's name is Mrs. Jenkins? This is very confusing. Mm-hmm. Well, but there's a lot of English in. Well, in I mean, I know that that's. I'm taking this at face value. A big use of ghee, cremating <laughs> bodies in India. Yeah. So anyway, I, I did find a story that kind of had a future influence in it. Um, <laughs> Both of you look up like, what the crap was that? Well, I'm looking at my notes and I heard a noise and I didn't know if it was a noise in the room or a noise on someone um, else's I'll hand. give you a hint. He's a dog with love handles. He's <laughs> derpy derpy do. All right. So, so the future story I have starts with Paul Byrne. Byrne was born in Germany in 1889, and his family moved to New York in 1898 to escape anti-Semitism in the area. So apparently that shit goes way back where he studied acting, but he soon found himself a knack for the more backstage elements of the theater, the stage managing tech directing. Eventually in the early twenties, he moved to Hollywood to be a film editor, but then he also found a knack for screenwriting and film directing. So he kind of moved into that area in 1930. He met Gene Harlow and despite being kind of a rat faced guy, <laughs> Byrne had a habit of batting way outside of his league and started dating Harlow, and the two got married in July in 1932. Like a lot of Hollywood fairy tales, this one burns out pretty quickly. September 5th, 1932, Byrne was found dead inside his home, naked on the floor in front of his full-length mirror, shot in the head. There was a note found that said, Dearest dear, unfortunately, this is the only way to make good the frightful wrong I have done you and to wipe out my abject humiliation. I love you. Paul, you understand that last night was only a comedy, and therefore the death was ruled a suicide. So, there's some weird things about this death. Some claim he was murdered by a mistress, and then there's also a lot of speculation that MGM Studio came in to cover the whole thing up, because what good is having sexpot Jean Harlow on screen if she can't even keep her own husband from stepping out on her was the thought. (laughs) Supposedly, the butler found the body and called MGM first, and then the police weren't called for another two hours. I don't know. I didn't look too deeply into this. I think I've heard some other MGM and, like, big studio stories of similar nature, where they definitely interceded. 
it doesn't sound out of character for that era. That's <laughs> for sure. Byrne did have a couple other women in his life besides Jean. It was known that he was having an affair with his secretary, Irene Harrison, the whole time he was with Jean. Also, he was uh, still financially supporting his common law wife from New York, Dorothy Millett. <laughs> Millette had mental and emotional issues and had spent some time in a Connecticut sanitarium that Byrne was footing the bill for. <laughs> she traveled to Hollywood in September 1932. Remember, he was found dead on the 5th, so there's not a real big window for that. And reportedly met with Paul on the night of his death. She was found dead in the Sacramento River two days later. Um, it was determined that she had committed suicide by jumping from a steamboat. <laughs> Whatever the case, uh, some people still believe that Byrne haunts the Harlow house to this day. But oddly enough, his first appearance wasn't just your standard haunting, hey, I'm still here, but possibly was a warning. So one of the future owners of the Harlow house would end up being Jay Sebrin, who was a hairstylist that would eventually grow into be one of the premier men's stylists in Hollywood. Jay wasn't the only one in the house bound for fame, though, because for three years he was engaged to an unknown struggling actress by the name of Sharon Tate. Their engagement ended when Sharon met her future husband, Roman Polanski, but the two remained good friends afterwards. One night in 1966... Didn't Sharon Tate get murdered by the Manson family? Oh, yeah, we're getting to that. Okay, all right, I'm jumping ahead here. Oh, yeah, no, you're you're not wrong. (laughs) One night in 1966, Tate was staying in the Harlow house by herself and felt a wave of uneasiness come over her. Later, telling the story to a reporter, she said she felt funny, and every little noise seemed to echo unearthly that night, so she left the lights on in her bedroom on purpose. Shockingly, as she sat in her bed unable to sleep, a, quote, creepy little man came into her bedroom, completely ignored her, and began wandering around as though he were searching for something. She was sure it was the ghost of Burn, grabbed up her robe, and ran out of the room in fright. She hurried down the stairs... The fright she got upstairs paled into comparison to what she saw at the bottom of the stairs. At the bottom, she saw a figure bound up with its throat slit. The figure disappeared before she could determine even if it was a man or a woman. Now we fast forward to August 8th, 1969, (laughs) where Sharon was out having dinner with some friends. Jay Sebring, Washdeck Frakowski, and Abigail Washdeck? His name was Washdeck? Watch deck, W O J T E K. Not like his dick was dirty and he needed to. <laughs> he needed washing, yeah. <laughs> like, like he was very, very Polish. Like okay. <laughs> watch deck. I know I looked this up. I forget what watch deck did. Abigail Folger was the heiress to the Folger Coffee Fortune and was aspiring actress. Uh, they returned to Sharon's house around ten thirty, and it was sometime shortly after this that the four members of the Manson family staged a drug fueled attack on the home. The first person the Mansons found was Steve Parent, a friend of the household's caretaker. He was just the wrong place at the wrong time, and the Mansons crossed paths with him as he was leaving. They slashed him with a knife and shot him in the face four times. Damn. When they made it to the house, they slid open a screen and surprised the occupants. They gathered them all in an execution line in the living room, taunting them. The house gets, to their credit, did try to fight back. Jay Sebring was the first to try to run, but was quickly shot, and everyone else struggled out of the situation at this point. Furkowski made it to the front door, but was shot, then stabbed 51 times and bludgeoned over the head more than a dozen. Folger ran out the back bedroom door screaming for help, but was also caught and stabbed 28 times. Tate and the still-alive Sebring were tied together by the neck with a white cord that was slung over a high open beam in the living room. Sebring was shot in the face, then stabbed multiple times. Tate was saved for last, slowly tortured and taunted, stabbed 16 times in the front and back. She was still alive when they left her to bleed out and scrawled pig across the front door in her blood. Wasn't she pregnant, too? She was pregnant, too, at the time, yes. And if they shot him in the face and they were tied together by their necks, they must not have been back to back. Oh, I I mean, they could have shot him in the side of the face, I guess. I guess. I'm just trying to picture it all. Yeah. I'm over Listen. here trying not to picture it. <laughs> but when you co- you compare how they died compared to her having a vision of a bound figure with its throat slit, that's kind of a creepy future comparison there. Future ghost. It wasn't as Christmassy as your guys's. You guys actually got something that was Christmas related. I didn't push Ish. that extra mile yeah. out. 
I don't remember what I had. I had one reference to Christmas, and it turns out you guys had already covered it. That's fair. We learned last year that uh, Christmas stories are not in ready supply, unfortunately. So I guess that's that. Past, present, future, right? Ghost of the Christmas past, Christmas present, and Hollywood future. Christmas presents. Yeah, Christmas presents. Theo loves Christmas presents. Is it like the future, like Back to the Future, where it's not technically the future anymore at any point? Well, no, yeah, it wasn't, it's not our future, but when Sharon Tate saw a ghost, it was the ghost from Sharon Tate's future, which was not very long. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I guess that ends a Manson family Christmas. Is that what we're doing next year? (laughs) (laughs) We should really remember that, you know, we'll just tell all the tales and be like, if this is not vengeful ghost material, I don't know what is. Family Christmas. (laughs) So cheery. Well... Do we have any recipes? I guess last year we did lots of recipes, but I didn't put that kind of foresight into this one to have some extra recipes on deck. Did you do a drink recipe? I did a drink recipe. Someday I should probably actually uh, make and photograph and send you drink recipes because I think there's like <laughs> six I haven't done yet. Uh, yeah, this is number five or six I think that haven't made it to the stage. Time to get boozy. I have like most of the stuff for most of well, the ones. Yeah, like I have, I they're trust- on deck. I trust you're ready for them. It's I just, just you know. taking a picture of them is so much work. I have to, like, set up the fake studio and then get the cat to stop, you know, licking the garnishes. <laughs> hope, hope a squirrel doesn't run by. It's a whole thing. All right. Christmas drink. So I, did a, I did a drink. It's kind of Christmassy. You got booze in it? I do. Got holly in it? Mistletoe. Mistletoe, yeah. Ground up cookies. Reindeer hooves. All of those things. Stank. Stank and skank. Take that to the bank. <laughs> Gotta refill my tank. Boogie. <sighs> Poop scoot boogie? Hoots. The hoots paw boogie? <laughs> the hoots paw boogie. That would be more appropriate for the, the other episode yeah. we did, I think. Can we rename it? Is it too late? It's the hoots paw bo- boogie. I can't say it. <laughs> But it's going to be amazing. I did come to the conclusion recently that the Old Testament was less of a religion and more of like HOA guidelines because it was like, oh, don't mix these <laughs> fabrics together. And oh, don't plant these crops next to each other. And right. Don't put these things on your plate. Or it will rain down fire upon you. Don't leave your cross up more than three days. And what's the problem with yeast? <laughs> I have a problem with yeast. All right. A drink that I did not name, but it's festive. It's a... Manson family Christmas. That's next year. So I'm just going to, we're just going to keep it kind of basic. We're going to do a cranberry mule. So mules, I keep thinking are going to stop being trendy, but here they are fucking. My God, Moscow mules are so delicious and they go down so easy. Well, they're, you know, they've got all that nice ginger in them. They're good for your belly. Oh, so good. So good for your belly. So I'm going to do a cranberry mule. I like cranberries. So... Basically, we're going to make a cranberry simple syrup, which you can use fresh or frozen cranberries for. I mean, I feel like you could probably do it with canned cranberry sauce in an act of desperation. You know, heat that up, water it down, whisk it up really good. Simple syrup. It's simple. It's simple and it's syrup. Cran jam. Cran jam. Oh, Black Betty. Cran jam a lamb. (laughs) So we'll get some some cranberry simple syrup. We'll get some some good old vodka because nothing says the holidays like vodka. And then... uh, (laughs) You're not wrong. We're going to put, like, you know, a shot of vodka, a little simple syrup, like half an ounce, maybe. That's, like, a couple bar spoons full. And then we're just going to top it with ginger beer and squeeze up, like, half a lime in there. And I think it'll be delicious. And All right. it sounds delicious. Easy. And you can zhuzh it up. You could put, like, a salty or sugary rim on it. Sprig of mint. I don't know that I want mint and cranberry. Rosemary? Maybe a little rosemary. Grandma ribbon candy. And then, you know, you can play around with ginger beers because I don't know, like, if it's like this on the rest of America, but cock and bull is everywhere here and it's a subpar. (laughs) I find cock and bull to be a subpar ginger beer. When I was a kid, there was this ginger beer that my grandma would get in like a little brown bottle. It was the most delicious thing I've ever had in my life. It was so potent. Was it Bundaberg's? Have no idea. Google Bundaberg's and see if it's, if it's that. Wait. Bundaberg. It's an it's an Australian one. They make these other lovely sodas. Australian for ginger beer. Like I brought Bundaberg, their guava soda to your house a couple years ago, Nick. Yeah. Okay. Sounds too close to Thunderbird in my mind, which the generic boons when we were kids. Is it that one? Maybe. 
I mean, the bottle is right. I'm not sure about the label. I feel like the label's a little big, but this was also many, many, many years ago. I mean, this is their their current current label. I don't know what their previous label incantations have looked Literally like. decades ago. Um, in the Northwest, yeah. I like Bedford's ginger beer. It's made in Port Angeles. And I just feel like it's uh, less chemically tasting than the cock and bull. Mm. But cock and bull, I mean, it'll work. Ginger ale will work. If you don't have ginger ale, you can muddle some fresh ginger and like top it with some soda and some bitters. Stick it in my soda stream. It's just a chunk of ginger in your soda stream. Yep. Did Snoop Dogg sell your soda stream? No, the kids got a soda stream for Christmas. Ah. Is that what that giant sriracha nail polish bottle is behind you? (laughs) No, that's just a giant sriracha tin that Donovan got because he likes sriracha. (laughs) (laughs) To go with his fake butterfly knife. Go with his fake butterfly knife. His training butterfly knife. His butterfly training knife for training butterflies. (laughs) To stab people. I stab people. Four or five people every day. Try to see a shrink to stop that. It's like cock fighting. It's butterfly fighting. That's what the butterfly knife is for. Do you know how hard it is for a butterfly to have razor blades strapped to its little wings? <laughs> it's a lot of weight for them. It is. It's a miracle they ever get off the ground. Damn. All right. Next episode. I feel... Uh... So Manson Family Christmas Punch, I guess, is what we're calling that. Manson Family is next year. Oh, okay. Gotta go with something else. I don't remember the other story. <laughs> uh, There was... Uh, not Auschwitz. Uh, the hell's the name of that place? Alcatraz. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Christmas got real aggressive. The Manson family. <laughs> Auschwitz. Disneyland. The aggressive family Christmas. I just learned there's an Alcatraz East that is a weird crime museum, I think, in Tennessee. That's where, like, Ted oh. Bundy's car is. Oh. Huh. Weird. Right. Hashtag the more you know. Their name for the drink is what... The bird. What my brain. Bird. Those are the the bird beer of Alcatraz. Bird is the word. Bird, 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 bird is a word. All right. Well, next episode, I think we're gonna take a a little bit of a New Year break and throw out another clip show. Do we want to come up with a future episode, or do we want to figure that out later? We don't have to figure it I out. Feel right like, now. It could I feel like I feel like we should do it now, oh, or else now. we're not gonna. Well, I mean, All right. I don't think we'll do it if we put it off. Sure. Fight me. <laughs> it actually isn't what I meant to say. I was gonna say like you know, debate me or yeah, you know, no fight me's better. <laughs> it's always better. <laughs> fight me. <laughs> I'm willing to throw down over this. Are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm really not though. I'm no, so but you, lazy you, you're supposed tired. to. You're supposed to trick him. Oh to yeah, I think you, you're, you got a bluff. You're this, it's you know. Well, I had some topic ideas a while back, but I can't remember what any of them are now. Was it Hellhounds? Because we keep threatening to do that. I've done Hellhounds. Yeah. Have you? Well, they were demon dogs, but... And I said I need to research them more. I don't. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, Yeah. that sounds hard. Because they kept coming up for a while there. What kind of dogs are those? Irish Hellhounds. Animal Ghost. Let's do Animal Ghost. We didn't do Animal Ghost. I, I brought it up. Let's do Animal Ghost like months ago. Only if there's a ghost elephant. Somebody better find a ghost elephant. Write that down. Like the one that Edison Fred? No. Callback. How has that been brought up like four times this week, by the way? <laughs> is it just by Nick or is it You keep other bringing people? up elephants, I guess. I wasn't, I no, like, maybe, is it on an episode, is it on an episode of South Park? I feel like maybe Sean had something going on on TV about it. And then I feel like I saw like a TikTok video about, like, it's like Edison's elephant is haunting me right now. I feel like they did parody that on a South Park, but I could be wrong. South Park is almost to that Simpsons stage where they've done everything. Hey, so checking our show notes. Do we have anything to add to the show notes on this? I don't think so. (laughs) Nick's going to make a new shirt. I don't remember what it was going to say, but I said something and he was like, I'm going to make that into a shirt. I've got a list now of shirts. It was not on the episode either. It was just like some bullshit during a conversation. that's, That's where most of them come from. Let me see my list here. I do have a list of shirts. List of shirts. Come on, hurry up. Load. A turd sickle. It's really rough when you get your tongue stuck to a turd sickle. You'll poop your eye out. Exactly. Um, let's see. Here's the current list of shirts I need to do. It's not a tulpa. We don't allow Faye in this house. Wooden sphincter. Hell dogs. Last hominid standing. <laughs> Cat placenta demon repellent. <laughs> 
and Bring Back Whimsy. Ah, uh, Bring Back Whimsy was our random conversation yes. of the day. I mean, I don't know if we should make Cat Placenta shirts or if we should just make some Cat Placenta exorcism spray or something. Tonic. Tonic of Cat Placenta. Simple syrup. Mmm. No. No. I am going, next time I have a baby, though, I think I'm going to get my placenta freeze dried and put into capsules. Okay. I'll let you know what it tastes like. Or simple syrup. Or we freeze dry it, you grind it down, and then you put it into smoke bombs. You'd be like, smoke bomb, poof, and there's placenta everywhere. <laughs> a baby or a dog is going to get into it. I feel this coming. <laughs> <laughs> got to go to the vet or the doctor and explain what happened. All right, we've got a YouTube. Um <laughs> <laughs> We do. Check out our YouTube. We put up the YouTube version of the podcast there. Some people use YouTube like an audio player. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter. We won't find you there, but you can find us. So we've got a YouTube. We've got a Patreon. we still got the same one person on our Patreon. <laughs> She's the real MVP. I know. I feel like we should do something for her. T-dubs. We should just make T-dub shirts. Okay. I don't know what that's going to do. I don't either, but I feel like it's going to have some, like, very mall graffiti style graphics. Okay, it's on the list. I guess it just leaves. Please drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Don't end up. Don't become our next ghost. Why is my dog whining? Don't become our next derp, 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 derp. Don't, please. We don't need any more derp, derps. It's enough derp, derps. Suddenly derp, derp.